today on an all-new Dr. Phil. I believe that my wife has poisoned me three times. A suspicious husband. You trying to kill the boy? Absolutely not. A frightened wife. How'd your nose get broken? I have no idea. How hard did you slap her? A dangerous marriage. You said he ran over your foot. She needed me to run it over. She needed to be the victim. He says you go crazy, but you just blow up. Stop the truck! You're breaking my fingers! God, I'm having deja vu. We had our grandchildren over, and she took his truck. And he was yelling, stop! Bring back my truck! You two are tall three-year-olds. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Go, Dr. Phil. Walking down the aisle and saying I do should be the happiest time of your life, right? Yes. But what happens when for better or worse, just keeps getting worse and worse and worse? Well, that's exactly what my guests today say happened to them. Nikki says that when she met Mark five years ago, he was a total gentleman. In 2010, he proposed and they married. Now, Nikki claims, she's been duped. She says Mark is a completely different person than the one she met. She claims that since getting married, Mark has broken her nose, punched her in the face, run over her toe with his truck. Here's a clip of a fight they had this past July. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I hate you. Why do you hate me? I hate you because you do this to me. I hate you. I hate you. What are you talking about? I know, Nikki. You're a mean, nasty person. You want me to feel like this. Otherwise, you wouldn't do what you do. You wouldn't say what you say. You wouldn't keep it going. You want me to be miserable. Well, Mark says Nikki's drama is so out of control that he's now living with his mother. He says he recently tried to walk away from a fight with Nikki, but this is what she did to stop him from escaping. You're gonna run me over. Please go. Stop the truck. Maddie, bring me my phone. Leave me alone. You're going to break my fingers. Ow! Get him out. No! You're breaking my fingers! Get out! No! Nikki, get off! Well, Nikki says Mark is physically and verbally abusive, and she thinks he makes her miserable, and he does it on purpose. Mark became violent with me soon after I was pregnant with our oldest daughter, and it has escalated over the last three years. He's yelled in my face. Shut your mouth. He's pushed me. He's intimidated me. He's verbally abusive. You're a nightmare to deal with. He does tell me that I'm a bad mom. Called me fat. He calls me a bitch almost daily. He will call me a slut and a whore. Mark and I fight and argue daily. You're a liar! It's a chaotic home. <laughs> You're a Mark. Mark is the instigator of physical violence in our home. He's been physical with me more than 20 times. He slapped me, squeezes my body, leaves bruises on my arms. He's beat me in front of my children. You punched me in the face. You're gonna say you're not abusive? You ruptured my eardrum, gave me a concussion, broke my nose. Because of his violence, I do fear for my life. One day, Mark was yelling at me, taunting me, flipping me off. Then he ran over my foot with the truck. And it ripped my entire big toenail off. And I fell down the ground and started screaming. God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. He says that it was an accident. I do think he makes me miserable on purpose. You want me to be miserable? I do love Mark. I'm not sure if I want to make it work or not. Now, Mark admits he's hit Nikki, but he says... It was only once, and she was the instigator. 
My home life with Nikki is absolute chaos. My wife will tell anyone who will listen how she's a battered wife. People may have this view that I'm a woman beaten piece of crap, but the truth of the matter is, my wife instigates a lot of our fights. I did not cut the you, and I, I yes, think it did. No, I didn't. I have hit her one time. I'm not an abuser. Battered wives are scared and timid because they're afraid that they're gonna be battered. My wife is the exact opposite. My wife will, you know, nag, push me, slap me. She's punched me. Nikki will scream, and, and I mean scream. You're just a little boy. It goes from zero to a hundred in millisecond. She will poke and prod until I finally explode. She'll torment me with cold water while I'm sleeping, turn the light on every hour on the hour, pull the blankets off. My wife's called the police on me at least a dozen times, even if she doesn't feel threatened, just to control the situation. My wife says that I've choked her, broke her nose, ruptured her eardrum, gave her a concussion, none of which is true. Uh, I ran my wife's foot over with my truck about two years ago. She was the retard who put her foot under the back tire. She needed me to run it over. She needed to be the victim. Okay. Um, really? Is this what you envisioned for your life? Was this it? No, sir. What the hell went wrong? I don't know. I'm hoping you can tell me. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I think. I just want to know. What went wrong with your life? Just a long line of bad decisions. Have you punched her in the face? No. She says you punched her in the face three times. And you say once, you hit her in the face open-handed. That's correct. We got the police report. It said injuries to the victim consisted of uh, redness and swelling on the victim's forehead. Swelling was circular, about an inch and a half approximately three-eighths of an inch tall. Injury continued to swell while speaking to the victim. The victim had a cut on the right cheek approximately a half inch long. I might have done the cut when I slapped her, but I didn't punch her in the face. Oh, did you, did you do the swelling? Did you, did you break her nose? No. How did your nose get broken? I have no idea. When I left the house, I mean, she was running around the front yard screaming for help. And, I mean, if her nose was broken, it would have been bleeding. I mean, there would have been far more evidence. I mean, my fist is much larger than an inch and a half. Well, she went to the doctor two days later, and they said she had ecchymosis on the bridge of her nose. It's bleeding under the skin. Left auditory canal was narrowed, which means that it was swelling and closing up the canal. She had mild edema to the suborbital, orbital region of the bridge of the nose. Her face was tender uh, to the right forehead and the right bridge of her nose. You right-handed? Uh, yeah. Slap her with your right hand? No. Slap her with your left hand? Yes, sir. How hard did you slap her? Hard. Slap my hand that hard? That hard? What do you think about everything he's saying here? Yeah, it's not the truth. What is the truth? The truth is that he dragged me onto the ground and got on top of me, and he was hitting me with something so hard that I was seeing flashes of light. Uh -huh. He said at one point that it was his elbow. I don't know if it was his fist or his elbow, but I just know that my face was getting hit so hard. That was, those pictures were about three weeks after. So which one of you is telling the truth and which one of you is lying here? I'm not lying. Are you a drama queen? I don't think that I'm a drama queen. I mean, do you, do you overreact? I probably sometimes. Do you escalate everybody... situations when they could otherwise be de-escalated for everyone's safety? Maybe once in a while. Do yes. you do it in front of your children? Yes, my children are always with me, so there's never a time that they're not. You say he ran over your foot. You say that he just backed up over your foot, and Mark, you say she stuck her foot under there. Let's just take a look at this. Now, how, fa 
fast is that car going? About a half a mile an hour. D did you not see the car coming? No, I, I knew that he was driving. I guess I just didn't realize that he was that close to me. To me, this looks like this leg right here is going like this. But I didn't move that leg. I'm sorry? I didn't move that leg forward. I was standing in the same position. I do my homework. And I, I've looked at this very, very carefully. And I'm really troubled by the problem-solving skills that the two of you don't have. And I'm really troubled by the fact that you're doing it in front of your children. I agree. And I would not have booked this story if you two didn't have children. Now, Mark says he believes there's a good chance his wife may have tried to poison him, kill him why he says he was intubated in the ER after eating a meal prepared by Nikki when we come back. I believe that my wife has poisoned me three times. I woke up at the hospital. The doctor told me that I hadn't gone into anaphylactic shock. My wife has exhibited very erratic and bizarre behaviors. At times, she will beat herself in the face and head with remotes and phones, like just smash it until the remote's broken. She'll get so angry that she'll like put her face down in her lap and just grab hair, and she's ripping like a handful of hair out of her head. She'll go curl up in a fetal position in the bathtub and just scream, I hate you, I hate you. I hate you! <laughs> I mean, hundreds and hundreds of times. Or go in the back of the closet and hide behind the clothes. I found razor blades in the back of the closet there. I found knives, scissors. I believe that behavior is something she brought into this with her. It has nothing to do with me. Mark says from the outside, he knows that he looks like the bad guy. He says, in fact, he knows he's made some bad choices. But he says it is his wife, Nikki, that wreaks havoc in everybody's life and goes berserk in an instant. He also accuses her of possibly poisoning him. Take a look. I believe that my wife has poisoned me three times. The first time we were cooking and I ate some guacamole she bought at the store and it was instant. I mean, fire. My face was probably purple, it was so hot and I felt like I had to go to the restroom really bad. I woke up at the hospital. The doctor told me that I hadn't gone into anaphylactic shock. The second time we went out to dinner and I had eaten calamari and had the same reaction. And the third time was just a couple of weeks ago. My wife had made mashed potatoes and threw a piece of glass in my mashed potatoes. My wife was there every time it happened. It is a possibility that she's poisoning me. Okay, you trying to kill the boy? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Because he's saying there's a common denominator here. Time one, she's there, prepared it. Time two, she's there. Times three, she's there and prepared it. Uh, one time it had onions in it to which he has a severe allergic reaction. Uh, then he has mashed potatoes that has glass. That's absolutely not true. The first time I bought guacamole at the store, we didn't know that he had a severe allergic reaction. That's when we found out he had a severe allergic reaction. Are you trying to kill your husband? Absolutely not. Do you want your husband dead? No, under no circumstances do I want him dead. He says you go crazy, that you're just, that you, you're volatile, that you just blow up. He, once I get to that point, it's because normally he follows me around and torments me and I ask him to leave me alone. He won't leave me alone. He'll follow me into bedrooms, into bathrooms. So he chases you he down and won't let you get away. Oh, well, let's take a look away. at this. This is when you say he was going to break your fingers. Maddie, bring me my phone. You're breaking my fingers. Then get him out. You're breaking my fingers! 
Get out. No! You're taking a truck that has insurance on it. You said you were gonna leave. You're not, you're here, so get out. You said that you were gonna get take a truck with insurance on it. Get out. Get a truck with insurance on it and let my fingers out of the window. Then keep them out of the window. Get a truck with insurance on it, Mark. Nikki, get off! Maddie, bring me my phone. Hurry. You're really gonna do this in front of your girls? You're doing it, Mark. So I guess this is the exception that proves the rule because this is you hanging on the side of the car. Yeah, this is the is. second time that it appears that he's trying to leave. One time you get your foot run over. The second time he's got your fingers rolled up in the window and you're saying, stop, 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 you're breaking my fingers. He unrolls the window. You take him out and put him back in. Not once, not twice, but three times. He rolls the window down so you get your fingers out. You put him back in once, twice, three I times. Didn't. Sorry, I didn't want him to leave with that truck because the truck's in my name. It's not insured. He, there was a truck that he'd been driving for months that was sitting there that was insured that he could have taken. And I asked him to bring the truck back. And okay, oh, that's 30 seconds of my life I can't get back. <laughs> my point here, my point here is you're out in the driveway. Were you people raised by wolves? <laughs> You're out in the driveway yelling through the crack in a car. Stop, stop, stop. Bring back my uninsured truck. <laughs> Get, you're breaking my fingers. Give me my cell phone. You're breaking my fingers. He pushes them out. Stop. And you want to tell me about the status of the truck coverage? I'm interested in how you feel observing yourself on video as a grown woman out in the street with your hands stuck in the car and saying, stop, stop. I feel stupid, but honestly, he, that truck, he to this day has not brought back. He hides it. God, I'm having deja vu. You know why? Because this weekend we had our grandchildren over Avery in London. She's four and a half and he's three. And she took his truck. I swear to God, I swear to God, she, she took his truck, his matchbook truck. And he was yelling, stop, stop, bring back my truck. You two are tall three-year-olds. Question, when you turn around and say, give me my cell phone, who were you talking to? My daughter. Really? So your daughter is watching this. And my goal is it's going to end one way or the other today. There are two children trapped in the middle of this mess. We're going to talk about that in some detail when we come back. My kids see a lot of the fighting. Nikki and Mark have two daughters, three-year-old Maddie and one-year-old Bella. Nikki and Mark agreed to let us install cameras in their home so we could see what really goes on behind closed doors. Now keep your eye on little Maddie. My kids see a lot of the fighting. My wife is attempting to turn my three-year-old against me. My little girl will they'll say things like, remember when you punched mommy in the face. That bothers me a lot. It... My wife tells my little girls, daddy doesn't love you anymore. Daddy doesn't care about you. You only care about yourself rather than being out with your family. Oh, we are allowing them to see dysfunction at its finest. You're spending the day and getting into the family. Screw this 
Nikki, I didn't. Yes, you. Nikki. You're really gonna lie and say that you. I didn't. I said I wanted the horse. I wanted the horse. Yeah. Hurry, get a divorce. Hurry, hurry, run. Hurry. Hurry, did we get a divorce yet? Shame on the both of you for doing that. I, I, I just. Did you hear that little girl screaming? Yeah. And if we juxtapose that to you screaming in the driveway and her screaming in the den, you got stereo screaming. Wonder where she learned that. She said, Maddie, see, Daddy doesn't love us when he tried to leave. Where'd she learn those words? From me. So you said to her when you're upset and in a rage, Daddy doesn't love us, he's just leaving. I mean, if, I, I guess I have, I, that's where she would have learned it. I mean, I. Maddie would say, remember when Daddy punched you in the face? Maddie said, Daddy, mean. Maddie repeats what you say. Maddie, Daddy, go to girlfriends. Maddie asked me, Maddie saw him punch me in the face. She saw the entire thing. And there was not one word that was spoken about that after the incident. But she looked at me every day with my face bruised. And then one day we were at, the, at Walgreens and she asked the lady, where's my daddy? And when we got in the car, I told her, Daddy's on a timeout. And she said, why, my Mommy? Because he punched you in the face? I didn't tell her that. She saw it. Should that be in the vocabulary of no, a child that age? No, absolutely not. I mean, should that be in the vocabulary of your daughter? You're the, you're, you're the dad here. This is your family. No, absolutely not. And that's become your child's reality. I'm here to change that. And I'll do whatever it takes. You said, I'll do whatever it takes? Yes, sir. You've got to stop making excuses for what you're doing. There is never a time, never, ever, ever, that a man puts a hand on a woman in anger. Out in the street yelling and screaming and hanging on the side of a truck, getting your foot run over. Was this model for you? Now you all know that my wife Robin is dedicated to doing all she can to improve the lives of those affected by domestic violence. This is domestic violence. Last year, her foundation, when Georgia smiled, launched a very exciting program to stop domestic violence. It's called the Aspire Initiative, and it's an interactive curriculum for all ages. Your daughters are gonna need this. One section deals with the excuses abusers make. I want you to look at this. This is the Aspire Initiative, okay? And within it is the abuser's playbook. And here is what is listed in the abuser's playbook. Now, I went back through this and looked at the things that you had to say. I was just joking. You said that, right? To say, you know, come on, come on, come on. You got upset. You, you got me upset. It won't happen again. Uh, you, you said that one. I didn't mean uh, to hurt you. And of course, uh, you've said that one more uh, than once. You've said you deserved it. Uh, you've said you know Dr. what Phil, sets me it. off. She deserves it. It didn't happen like that. I mean, you've said that since we got here today. Uh, you're just as bad as me. You've said, hell, she's worse. 
you, you take issue with which one? I don't think she deserves it. I don't think any woman deserves it. Yeah. It's funny that you choose that one because most of your rhetoric here is that she provokes me. She's the one that does this. She doesn't let me leave. You know, it's like, you know, what, what do you expect? There's nothing in this world that I feel <clears throat> deserves a response like slapping her. I mean, she could have hit me four million times. It wouldn't have hurt me. I, there's no excuse for me to do what I did. No, no, there's not. That's... And I'm here today to make sure that my daughter never <clears throat> sees that again. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you a quick question. How did you choose out in the street yelling and screaming and hanging on the side of a truck, getting your foot run over and putting your fingers in the window and curling up in the bathtub and yelling and screaming, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. That's a strategy for being in this world. How did you choose that one? It evolved. It wasn't something that I said, oh, yeah, that's what I want for my life. No, no, you did make a choice. You got to own the choice. You, let me tell you, you wake up in the morning and you choose your behaviors. That's really good news, by the way. Because it means like we can change it. It's the only person you control is you. Only person you need to control. Him, you can inspire. Him, you can reject. Him, you can move on from. Him, you can, you can, you, you can give reasons to want to be better. But you, you control. You you control. Was this modeled for you? Some of it, yes. The fighting. There's a real powerful theory in psychology I'm going to tell you both about after the break that I'll bet you've never thought of. And I'll bet every one of you at home that lives in this chaos is going to be really interested in what I say. And also, when we come back, Mark says his wife refused to have sex with him for months at a time, but he believes it's her weekly wifely duty. <laughs> well, we'll hear what Nikki has to say about that when we come back. We actually have sex probably twice a year. Because she says that I'm abusive. The Bible says you have an obligation to take care of me. Not when you're physically abusive. I was bugging her one day, you know, please, you got to take care of me. So she's like, fine, we'll do it in the shower. She gets in the shower with me, tells me to go ahead and start. And when I did, she flung herself out of the shower, onto the ground, and started screaming. I raped her. I have no idea why she would do that. I did not rape my wife. Another issue in our marriage is that Mark has cheated several times and that he does have a gambling problem. I feel horrible about the cheating. I feel betrayed. I've tried to forgive him and I have taken him back. Nikki and Mark say they're here to fix what they call their chaotic and toxic marriage. Now Mark says one of the many things in their marriage that needs improvement is their sex life. Uh, God, I, I just can't imagine why y'all wouldn't want to lay down and <laughs> cozy up to one another. I mean, isn't that kind of a non sequitur here? I mean, it just doesn't flow, does it? From this, it doesn't flow. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. You want me to be miserable? Get off my truck, I'm leaving, get up. Oh, let's go have sex. <laughs> uh, that's schizophrenic. I mean, if you start doing that, we got a whole new set of problems here. Do you think this situation is dangerous? Yeah. Do you, do you think it's dangerous? Yes. You know, Robin, you have dedicated so much of your life and energy to this. She's adopted shelters around the country. You were just at one of the shelters that when Georgia smiled, the Robin McGraw Revelation Foundation sponsors. You talk to these women every day. How dangerous is this situation? Oh, it's extremely dangerous um, and sadly, uh, a lot of these women, just like here today, uh, stay in the situation because they don't recognize it as being abusive. And so they stay and they live it. And um, uh, just as today, I think both of them are being abusive. But a lot of women staying in, in their relationships 
not knowing that they're in an abusive relationship far too long. How often do you see women that are severely injured by accident? There was no intention to knock her eye out. There was no intention to, to give her brain damage, but it just happened. Oh, I've talked to pretty much every woman I've ever visited with in a shelter has been injured, sometimes beyond repair. This is a highly toxic, abusive relationship. And I said there's a theory in psychology that when people grow up in a dysfunctional family, they have a dysfunctional relationship with a parent. Unwittingly, they go find a spouse and try to work that out with them. But so often what they do is drag this legacy with them and take all of the bad things that they picked up, all the toxicity from their nuclear family, and they drag it into their family. And now, there was all this fighting and yelling and screaming, now what are your children living? You've got to decide what's really important to you in your life, and you behave consistently with that. Is insurance on a truck? important to you or is the fact that your daughter is seeing her mother yelling and screaming and being dragged down the street by her husband yeah, you could blow that truck matter. to hell and gone and it wouldn't matter if you could protect that child from making that part of her dna i agree had some real trauma to your brain, correct? Yes, sir. You have been pounded in the head with a baseball bat. That's correct. All right. So often, this rage, this anger, these, these impulses get caught up in a neurological foundation, a neurological basis. Dr. Lawless is the director of the PNP Center in Dallas, Texas, and there is often a neurological underpinning or a neurological storm that keeps these people from getting better with such things as anger management or talking therapies, correct? Absolutely. There's a, a dysfunction in terms of finding out what is the real cause versus what is the peripheral issue, like you just said earlier, that uh, it triggers, ignites something that's totally distractible. So what may be going, we don't know because there hasn't been the proper work done, but the truth is that a lot of this behavior may be involuntary for this man. It he may, may get to a point where neurologically he cannot inhibit or suppress behavior. Absolutely, and that has to do with the brain base that goes far beyond any kind of cognitive recognition. You're smarter than you're behaving. You're more compassionate than you're showing. And you're extremely self-destructive, which tells me you can't pump the brake when you need to. Did you get beat up growing up? Yeah. Who beat you up? My dad. Did he hit you? Yeah. Where'd he hit you? In the face, head a lot, butt, back. Mm -hmm. uh, How'd you feel after he would hit you? Scared, out of control. Did you hate it? Yeah. It was very scary. Then why are you duplicating it? I don't know. You realize you're becoming him. Yes, sir. Now, I want to help you. So much so that I, I want to fly you, just as our gift to you, to Dallas, Texas, to the PNP Center with Dr. Lawless and his team. And let's find out what's really going on with you. Thank you. Let's help you figure out how to be the man, the husband, the father that you know you can and need to be. 
let's, let's help figure that out. And maybe we rule some things out and then we know we can start working on something else. But that's the first step that I would like to do with you. But what do you do with this couple? Because I think this couple needs some serious time apart. And I'm gonna explain why when we come back and what I think needs to happen. We'll be right back. I tell you what I think needs to happen. I think what needs to happen is some work with each of you individually before we work with you as a couple because when you go to a relationship, you either contribute or contaminate the relationship with what you bring. And I think both of you are contaminators. Now for you, Nikki, there is a long-term trauma program in Nashville, Tennessee and it's called Milestones, and it's run by Miles Adcoms. He's sitting right next to Dr. Frank Lawless right here. And this is something that I think you deserve and you need to do to get yourself under control. You have to watch these videos and say, what the hell am I thinking? That's not me, I, that, that's Absolutely. not, you don't want that. No. Uh, Miles, I think it's important to work with her individually rather than like the on-site program where you deal with these folks as a couple. Can you work with her individually? Absolutely, and I totally agree. I think down the road, maybe we look at this as a couple or co-parenting, but right now we got to focus on you because nothing changes until you change. And I think we need to send you to P&P and start figuring out everything that's going on with you system-wise, neurologically, psychologically, hormonally, every possible way. And Frank, you can scrub him top to bottom, right? Absolutely, from the very beginning to the end. That's right. Are you willing to do this? Absolutely. Are you willing to take this help and do this? Are you willing yeah, to do this? Absolutely. Because this has to stop. I'm what's called a mandated reporter. And when I see children in what I consider to be harm's way, I have a duty to either put a plan in motion or to report this to Child and Family Services. And if I have a commitment from both of you to engage, then that meets my responsibility. If it doesn't, I'm gonna turn you in. As I mentioned earlier in the show, last year my, my wife Robin's foundation, When Georgia Smile, launched a very exciting program designed to stop domestic violence. It's called the Aspire Initiative. This is an interactive curriculum for all ages she made it available in English and Spanish. When I say old ages, we, we, she's getting to these kids before they get into relationships, early in their relationships, married relationships, older folks, everybody. There's, there's all these different phases in English and Spanish. And for more information, you can go to whengeorgiasmiled.org and you can go to drphil.com. And remember, all of this is free. And you can also visit iTunes or the Android App Store and download the free Aspire News app for your smartphone. It is a breakthrough in technology that could save your life with just the tap of a button. As I said, it's already been downloaded over 125,000 times and the app was recognized on Capitol Hill by National Health Collaborative on violence and abuse as one of the two apps in 2014 that were the most beneficial to fight to end domestic violence. So it's really good. They were even talking about this at the UN recently, right, Robin? They That's were talking right. about this That's at the right. UN? That's right. I'm so very you proud. Meet you may need to add more than English and Spanish. That's true. Uh, because it's the United Nations was very excited about yes. your work. Yes. Uh, I want to thank all of my guests. A special thanks to Dr. Frank Lawless and Miles Adcox. Thank you guys for being here. We'll see you next time.